Here we go. All right, guys. This is round number three of CISSP Jeopardy. Uh, the website is cybersexstudy.com. And uh, we've got one returning champion. I have a couple more that uh, I was hoping would be here tonight. They are SVP, but we don't see them yet. So we'll go ahead and get started. And hope that they show up at some point in time. So for tonight, we've got Domain 5, Identity and Access Management. Domain 6, Security Assessment and Testing. Domain 7, Security Operations. Domain 8, Security in the System Development Lifecycle. Uh, and then we round robin to Domain 1, Security and Risk Management. Domain 2, Asset Security. All right, Becky, the board's yours. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll go with Domain 1, Security and Risk. I'm sorry, say that again. All right, <coughs> hold on mute. Domain 1, Security and Risk Management. Let's go for the big money, 1,000. Big money. We're going to start this game out right. All right, here we go. I sent the notes out a little late, so you guys might not. I have one response that is not correct. The adverse effect of a threat overcoming a vulnerability. What's that called? The actual instance when that threat overcomes a vulnerability. The vulnerability itself is the weakness. I have correct response from Becky. Ah, impact, close enough. <laughs> the adverse was, effect of a threat overcoming a vulnerability. What are our four components of risk management? Likelihood, impact, threat overcoming a vulnerability. So okay. impact, I'll, I'll go ahead and give you that one. Okay, because I was thinking of, once you said it, I thought about exploit, but I have to remember that. Okay, the four parts, okay. Uh, 800 for uh, domain one. Domain one for 800. I have a an incorrect response. This is the possibility that a threat could overcome a vulnerability. And we're, we're thinking about our four. All right, I have something here. I have a correct response from someone. That it only says waiting for name. <laughs> so I'm not sure who this is. Uh, but the correct response is likelihood. That's James. That's James. OK. Sorry. No problem. I don't know why it still says waiting for name. Uh, what do I have to do? Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go ahead and play it like this. We know who you are now. All right, it's your choice, uh, James. I think you're on mute. Uh, oh, sorry. Let's go for this domain one for 600. All right, here we go. Staying in the same domain. A potential exploit of a vulnerability. First correct response is from Becky the Terminator. What is a threat? All right, Becky. Oh, my brain is gone. Okay, um, let's see. I'm going to try for big money here again. I always just like that. <laughs> mm. um, identity and access management. I've been studying that recently. So let's, let's go for big money on that. Domain five. All right, domain five for 1,000. I think I see a correct response again from the Terminator virtual directory. 
the actual files aren't listed in this directory. It's the uh, location of where the files are, which is a virtual directory. <coughs> All right, Becky. Uh, 800 for domain 5, please. Domain 5 for 800. Now, I, um, Becky, I told all the all the folks in my class about you, and um, James, I'm not sure he believed me, but James, James, you were fast, man. You were right on it, and Becky just got you. <laughs> and, 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 I'm telling you, <laughs> I know Becky's fast, and if you want to do it, you got to do it quick. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Becky. All right, uh, I'm going to go for, let's go for 600 identity and access management. 600, here we go. First correct response again. From the Terminator, what is a meta directory? Don't let metadata directory confuse you with meta directory. That's right. Metadata is data about data. Uh, a meta directory allows you to combine, combine <coughs> multiple directory services. All right, hold on a second. Let me clear out the board. All right, Becky. Okay, let's... Uh... Go for 400. Let's go for 400 for domain five. All right. All right. Don't overthink this one, guys. Whoops. Mm -mm. When you see that word, manage. I have an incorrect <coughs> response, and I finally have my second monitor working. So give me a second, guys. Hold on. Not ready. I see a correct response. Again from the Terminator. You got lucky? Directory that service. Was... Did you get lucky on that one? Well, I, I thought about it. I, I thought about it. I said, I think this is more general. So I said directory services. Okay. All right. Give me help. just a second here. Let me bring up my other screen now that she's finally working. And everything's going to come up on this side. Yeah, we, we see a... Yeah, I don't want you to see that. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I don't think you do. I, I really don't. <laughs> That's my cheat. <laughs> All right, Becky, the board's yours. Uh, okay. Well, I'm seeing the the the, uh, the round the, question. I don't yeah, see the, blue. the round question. Yeah, round. I see the. What happened? Hold on a second. Hold on. Uh, yeah, that's the cheat. You're seeing the wrong thing. Yeah, it changed up on me. All right, here we go. Okay. All right. So, yes, yes, I see the blue screen. Let's go for um, let's go for security assessment and testing. Domain six for a thousand. Domain six for a thousand. And I lost something here. Hmm. All right, give me another second here, guys. I lost my screen. We see it here, the blue screen. We see it. Yeah, but I, I um, in order to see the chat, 
something happened that prevent me from seeing the chat. Oh, here we go. Okay. All right, this type of software test is also referred to as structural testing or white testing. Did I get a response on this one yet? This is a, a, a difficult one. This this is a, this whole domain six is a brand new domain. I see a an incorrect response. I see another incorrect response. This type of testing, so it identifies test cases best on based on knowledge obtained from source code. And that should be a, let's see, source thing. I, okay, I got a correct response from James. What is code-based testing? I can't believe I got that right. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, That's one of the harder ones, too. <laughs> I tell you, that was a lucky throw. <laughs> All right, James, what do you got? Okay, let's go for... Uh, domain number six, uh, 600, 800, sorry. Domain six for 800. Yes, sir. Correct response from the Terminator. What is integration level testing? <coughs> it's, this it's whole funny. domain six, we talked about this last week. Um, this is a domain... This was the only new domain they added when they changed over to the eight domain format, but we really think that it should be moved over to the uh, to domain eight. It should be a subsection of domain eight, but it, it's right. all about testing of, of software development. Uh, but they decided to make it a domain on its own. All right, Becky. Okay, six hundred for domain six. <laughs> Get the hard domain out of the way. First correct response is from Roger. What is system level testing? You beat out Becky. Oh, yeah, he got me. <laughs> Just he a heartbeat. Me. Just a heartbeat. All right, system level testing is testing conducted on a complete integrated system to evaluate the system's compliance mm -hmm. with its specified requirements. All right, board is yours. Okay, I'll take uh, asset security for a thousand. Asset security for big money. Here we go. I think I, I've got something a little bit different on my board, but I have a correct response. Yeah, something looks a little different on mine, uh, but the correct response is... Hardening. That's right. You purchase That's a right. new piece of equipment, hardware, software. You install the operating system. First thing you want to do is harden it by closing all the ports and protocols, services that aren't necessary. Only turn it on those ones that are. All right, Becky. What do we got on the board? That was uh, which one was that? That was yeah. another thousand. Let me clear out the board to make sure we are. All right, we're all clear now. Okay, um, let's go for security operations for a thousand. Security operations. There we go. I have my first correct response again from the Terminator. To use the term shadowing. <laughs> Keep in mind that mirroring and shadowing 
are the same thing. Uh, when it comes to backing up information, mirroring and shadowing is uh, provides fault tolerance, provides redundancy. If one of the disks goes down, you still have the other one available. All right, Becky. Okay, let's go for um, let's go for a thousand for security in the SDLC domain eight. SDLC. This is a domain that people stay away from. Here we go. First generation programming languages. Oh no no no. My first correct response is from Roger. Machine level programming languages. And you program these computers with switches and buttons. There were no instructions written in human readable form and translated into computer form. All right, Roger. <coughs> okay, let's go for domain seven eight hundred security operations. All right, here we go. It's police footage. This relates to uh, information being backed up again. I have an incorrect response and I have a correct response. I think we have a new participant, RT. Correct response is fault tolerance. Uh, Webopedia defines fault tolerance as the, the ability of a system to respond gracefully to an unexpected hardware or software failure. All right, RT, can you unmute your microphone and make the next selection. Okay, so domain six hundred. I can barely hear you. I heard domain six for four hundred? Yes, that's correct. All right, here we go. First correct response, uh, uh, Becky gets you guys a lot because she, she doesn't even worry about uh, spelling correctly. <laughs> first, few words, first two letters right and that's it. First correct response is from the Terminator. What is unit, DS? I saw that. Yeah, all kind of crazy stuff, but uh, close enough. What is unit level testing? All right, a software test method by which individual units of source code, sets of one or more computer program modules together with associated control data, uh, usage procedures. When you're testing a uh, at specific units individually, you may not have the whole program developed yet. All right. <clears throat> okay, uh, which one was that? That was... Uh, which which level? What uh, domain was that? It should have been domain know. six for four hundred. Oh, okay. Yep. All right, I'm gonna go for domain domain. I'm going for big money. Uh, asset security domain two, eight hundred. Two for eight hundred. Two for All right, I have a correct response from the Terminator. What is categorization? After software hardening or software or hardware system components are procured and installed, they must be hardened. Um, but when it comes to system categorization, we're looking at the impact to the organization if the information on the system is compromised. If the confidentiality, integrity, or availability of each information type on the system is compromised, what would be the impact to the organization? It's the first step in the risk management framework.
process. The old die cap and ditch cap process. All right, Becky. Uh, I'm going to go for a 600. I'm going to stay in assets. Domain 2 for 600. This is a layup. Yep. And she's right on it. Becky, the Terminator, what is information classification? We have rules for how to classify information. Uh, classifying information is very important. It's one of the main things I focused on in developing this, uh, this course material. Um, but they don't want you to have too many levels, classification levels that would get, make it confusing. You don't want to have too few classification levels because it makes it seem like it, it's not necessary. And then there's a third rule saying that you should classify applications and determine which applications are more important than other applications uh, and not just the data. All right, Becky. Uh, okay, let's go for uh, let's go for 800. You know, I like the money. <laughs> SDLC, big money. First correct response again from Becky the Terminator interpreted languages with interpreted language source code is converted to machine code on the fly as the source code instructions are being written so in interpreted programs must be reduced to machine instructions at runtime which makes them run slower than compiled languages and that's the main thing you need to know for the exam Compiled languages run faster than interpreted languages. All right, uh, Becky. Okay, let's go for a, a six hundred for the uh, security and SDLC domain eight. Domain eight for six hundred. <laughs> And we just talked about this one. First correct response is from RT, compiled language. The whole program is written before it's compiled into um, machine language for the computer to understand. Compiled languages are faster than interpreted languages. Let me clear out this board here real quick. All right, RT, the board is yours. Okay, uh, security assessment and testing for 200. All right, domain six for 200 to close out this category. Here we go. First correct response, Roger, she just got you. The Terminator, what is fuzz testing? <clears throat> this is one we talked about in, in class last week. It's when you send random data, random data usually in large chunks, larger than what's expected by the application, to the input channels of the application to provoke a crashing of the application, see how the, it will respond. All right, Becky. Uh, let's go for domain seven or 600, please. Domain seven, 600. Yeah, unfortunately, we just had another uh, plane crash, and they just found the black boxes, or they think they found the black boxes. Uh, so these black boxes are, are capturing everything that happens, every voice, um, uh, anyone who speaks, uh, any activity of the plane, whether it's hydraulics or electronic surges, anything that happens, it's recording all that information. Correct response is from Becky. 
auditing. We think of auditing, we think of a system that is capturing everything that happens, all the user activity and all the system performance. It can, it can alert you if there's a, a, a CPU spike. It can alert you if a user tries to log in to uh, information or objects that it's not supposed to. All right. Uh, okay. Becky. Okay, let's go for 400 for domain one, please. Domain one for 400. It was a layup. Roger. See, Roger just got you. He typed three letters. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I, I know. And I, I know. I, was, I spelled it. I actually spelled it. They're on to you, Becky. They're on to you. Correct response and vulnerability. <laughs> a weakness in a computer system, a weakness in your physical uh, perimeter, any kind of weakness. It's one of our four components of risk management. All right, Roger. Okay, asset security for 400. <laughs> all right, I got a couple of people all over this. This time, Becky typed more letters, but still got it. She's typing really fast. Carl Friedman, <laughs> the gal. <laughs> uh, the key with these, if it's just, uh, if you just uh, delete a file or delete information, or even if you format your drive, the information is still there. It, it can still be recovered. It would require, you know, some special software to bring it back, but it, it can still be recovered. And the media, of course, can be recovered. The galsing is... Uh, a, a something where you take a really strong magnet and just wipe out everything on the drive. The information is permanently gone and the media can't be reused afterwards. All right. Uh, speed Typer the Terminator. Okay, let's go for 400, 400 for Domain 8, please. Domain 8, 400. Low-level language, I believe our first three generations of software languages were considered low-level. Low <laughs> first correct response, uh, RT, she just got you, man. You typed it twice. She just got you. First correct response is from Becky. What is assembly language? A low-level programming language in which each statement corresponds to a single machine code instruction. All right, Becky. Uh, let's go for 400 for domain 7, please. Domain 7, 400. Oh, sorry. I got a sorry. couple of responses that are mistyped and not necessarily <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> I have my first correct response from the Terminator. You know what, Becky? <laughs> uh, I've, I've got folks telling me that uh, you need to just stop and, and, and take the dog on exam already. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've got people telling me you're going to have a mutiny on your hands pretty soon. <laughs> got to schedule that sucker. We gotta oh, yeah. meet Becky in person, and then we gotta convince her. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you are ready, oh, Becky. Man. You are ready. <laughs> All right, the board yours. Okay, two hundred for what's it? Let's go for domain one. Domain one: security and risk management. And don't overthink this one. It's a layup. No responses yet. I have a couple of incorrect responses. If you identify a threat and a vulnerability, 
I have a correct response from Roger. What is a risk? You have a threat but no vulnerability, you don't have a risk. If you have a vulnerability but no threat, you don't have a risk. You have to have both. Once you identify both the threat and the vulnerability, and you're going to perform your assessment, you have to look at both likelihood and impact. Likelihood of the threat overcoming the vulnerability and the impact if the threat overcomes the vulnerability. There you go. Risk equals uh, asset times vulnerability times threat. No, that's not my definition. Risk equals likelihood versus impact of a threat overcoming a vulnerability. You can perform a risk assessment on all of your assets um, right out of the gate, but that's not in our formula. <laughs> all right, uh, Roger. Actually, I got that from one of the books. The what's that? The Eric Conrad's book. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't. Yeah, like that's that. what it says. I don't like that definition at all. That is just yeah. Assets like times it. vulnerabilities times threats. Oh my goodness. No. We have four components of risk: likelihood, impact, threat, vulnerability. You can list all your assets and then determine if there are any vulnerabilities to those assets, then identify if there are any threats that, that have been exposed in the wild to those assets, uh, and then you have a risk. Then you want to look at the likelihood versus the impact of the threat overcoming the vulnerability. Um, all right, uh, Roger. Okay, uh, domain two, 200, asset security. To close out this category. All right. Any responses yet? I have something that is kind of close. After performing this function on electronic media, the information is recoverable and the media is reusable. Uh, yeah, correct response is from clear is from Becky. Uh, overriding mm -hmm. or clearing is correct here. Was that not Becky? No. Mm, not me. <laughs> At 845, I see Becky that says clearing. But oh, but it says overriding. Yeah, no, said over same thing. Overriding and clearing are the same thing. Uh, overriding is a form of clearing. All right. Well, he gave me he gave me fresh from what I could see. So. <laughs> You go for it, Archie. So, Becky, yours shows that his is before yours? On my chat window, it says that I'm... Let me see. Oh, wait a second. Let me see. I, 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 think, I, I think Becky was first. Yeah, I see clearing first. Uh, oh, RT. Oh, you said RT. clearing first? Yeah. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. That's all right. Go ahead, all right. Go ahead RT. Go ahead, RT. Let's get some let's get new voice on here. <laughs> take, it, take it away, RT. Okay, sure. Uh... Let's do domain five, identity and access management for 200. All right, let's close this one out. Successful. <laughs> I think I see quite a few responses. You guys are jumping all over this one. Uh, first correct response, Roger, she just got you. Even though she spelled it incorrectly, what is authorization ID? <laughs> Authen, author. <laughs> After authenticating their identity and gaining access to the system, a subject should only be allowed to access the resources that he or she needs to perform their duties. That's called authorization. ID, authen, author. All right, Becky. Okay, let's go for 200 for security operations. Domain 7. There we go. I just taught a class about this in Guam a couple weeks ago. First correct response is from RT, penetration testing. Anybody familiar with Kali Linux? You can download a virtual image of it. 
and uh, it comes preloaded with all the pen testing tools you will ever need to be a very capable script kitty. All right, and for the last one, domain 8, 200, here we go. First correct response is from Roger. Mobile code. I think people think of mobile code as code that's on cell phones or on mobile devices, but it's not. It's actually one of the greatest threats to websites. When you go and click on a website and you've got Java and ActiveX that automatically run something without you having to initiate it, it could be running all kind of stuff in the background, key loggers and things that you don't intend for it to run. All right, that concludes this round of CyberSec Jeopardy. Uh, I'm going to stay on for a, a little bit. Um, I'm going to hit stop recording here if I can find the doggone button. <laughs> uh, if anybody has any questions or anything, <laughs> go ahead and stay online. And uh, thank you guys for participating. We'll see you next Saturday. 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. Take care.